We try to always keep our feet on the ground, the foundations of it, that we're a live act, we make our records, we tour, we're around the corner and people begin to understand, yeah, they're real. You know, they're not just, we're not just going to be on covers of magazines or on... In the 1970s, they were just another Sydney high school band playing at dances and chasing that elusive record contract. But today, their fame has spread worldwide. Their new album, Suicide Blonde, has just sold four million copies and in excess are busy winning more fans in Europe. Debbie Byrne reports. is something of a curiosity in the music world. After 13 years together, without a lineup change, the band still concentrate on what many believe they do best, playing live. We tried to make ourselves a reality, you know? I mean, we live yeah. in this age of video and... and personality cults and etc etc it's very sophisticated and uh, complex business you know i suppose and, um we try to always keep our feet on the ground the foundations of it that we're a live act we make our records we tour we're around the corner and people begin to understand yeah they're real you know they're not just we're not just going to be on covers of magazines or on mtv it's that theory that's taken Michael Hutchins, the rest of the band, and a crew of 60 on the road again. If you want to the business side of it, well, uh, it makes sense to go out there and tour an album. You know, um, you know, more people people are going to find out. It's a, it's just really a, a, a fun way to advertise the album. You know, for us, really. Okay, also, we get to play. I mean, it's important. You know, that's what we are. We're a live band. So many bands are doing that. As the band's own candid camera shows, touring means endless days on the road, always on the way to or from a venue. I think you forget about yourself. I think you just you, you tend to just go out there and you're just living for the co the tour and the audience, and and you you got to stop and smell roses, as they say. You know, treat yourself a little bit better sometimes. It's expensive though. Mm. Days off cost a fortune. <laughs> yeah. Hutchins knows all about the cost of this lifestyle. As lead singer and pin-up boy of the band, he gets the most attention from the fans and the media, particularly since he started seeing Australian songstress Kylie Minogue. I'd have to be a miserable sort to sort of say, oh, please, please, you know. I mean, it's a price you pay, I suppose. I mean, any time all that stuff gets out of control is when you really do lose control of it and people make things up and they spread rumours and they... You know, they just generally use you as fodder. I'm not interested in yeah. selling papers for people. The European tour is coming to a close here in Dublin, where, like some of the rest of Europe, the fans have taken a few years to catch up with NXS. But now they have, they certainly make the trip here worthwhile. When you hear in excess, you just want to dance. That's what it is. I just love in excess. What do you like about in excess? Michael. <laughs> yeah, I like it. No, the music is good, like, and I've heard the good live, so I mean, I suppose that's what I'm looking forward to. It's the only band that's worth my to see. After another American tour, in excess will be playing to home crowds again in May, and Hutchins is predicting it won't be just more of the same. When we get to a point in your life, where you just want to approach things a little differently, you know? We're going to try and do that for the, the rest of our, however long this lasts, you know? How long will it last? Who knows? Debbie Byrne in excess, back in a moment. And personality cults and et cetera, et cetera. It's very sophisticated and uh, complex business, you know, I suppose. And, um,